Hi everyone, Brent Raymond here from the 4D Method, 4D and Wakanda user group. Uh, there's recently been some discussion about doing uh, drag and drop from 4D list boxes, uh, but uh, being able to drag and drop multiple rows. Uh, that's not natively possible in 4D. I'll show you what happens when, uh, when you do that. I made a little demonstration database here with one table named Funk. Uh, this is a form with uh, a list box on it and we'll just go ahead and run the form um, with some sample data. So if you try and drag this automatically only one row will, uh, will be selected. It'll erase your, your previous selection and you can even confirm uh, what is being selected? Uh, I have a. Uh, I'm setting a status variable. Um, and we'll we'll update the. We'll set the update time to one second so that it uh, it'll uh, it'll update quickly when we're uh, doing things here. Um, but right. So as you. Uh, As you're dragging, you lose the uh, the other record. So normally it should say, "Ah, well, you uh, you dragged and dropped uh, three records instead of one." So, uh, how do you get around that? And it is possible. So what we have here is a uh, just a list box on the form. This one in particular is a current selection list box um, with a local highlight set called LB highlight set. Uh, selection mode is multiple. Uh, we've enabled draggable and droppable uh, for this object and we've also enabled the on load, on begin drag over, on drag over, on drop, and on selection change, all of those events are, are important to make this work. Um, so I commented out a little bit of code in here in order to demonstrate it not working. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uncomment the code, uh, the functional code, and then walk you through what's going on here. So at the top we have some declarations. You can collapse that. Um, here, it just tests to see if there's any um, any data in the func table, and if not, it creates it. So we can also collapse that, and then it sets up the uh, the form with a uh, with all records and uh, creates the highlight set uh, and something that uh, we're going to use called the mirror set, and then we set the status to loaded. Okay, so. When, let's look at the on selection change uh, first here. And collapse the other ones. As you're selecting, uh, you're, you're keeping track of a, uh, a process variable called dragging, Boolean, a Boolean variable called dragging. Um, and as you're selecting, you or copying your highlight set into the mirror set. So the mirror set does what it sounds like it ought to. It mirrors the highlight set. And in our instance here, um, we're setting the status to on selection change selecting. Uh, so let's watch that in action as we're selecting around in the, uh, in the form here, in the list box. So this updates to selecting. And you can also see the, the set now has two records in it. So the mirror set is, is being uh, updated with the highlight set. So <clears throat> on begin drag over is the first thing that, uh, that happens, uh, that fires when you start dragging. Um, we check to see if there's uh, records in your highlight set, which is 
is synonymous with your mirror set. And then we say, okay, you are in fact dragging some records, so set dragging to true. And then here's where uh, the trick is. Um, because graphically the, the selection gets, gets changed as you start dragging, well, we copy the mirror set back to the highlight set on begin drag over and then that automatically graphically replaces uh, you see a flash of uh, the one record but when you start dragging then it restores the highlight set that you were working with um, on drag over is where you uh, where you can decide whether or not you want to accept it in this case we're accepting all drags and then on drop is where that uh, um, is where you see the, the the status for dropped how many records let's see how many records actually got dropped drop two records that's, that's exactly how many that we're dragging so you see on selecting uh, on selection change selecting and we're on drag over on selection change while dragging we'll get to that and you successfully dropped three records which you can read from whatever process uh, you can read uh, you can you can get access to uh, this list box highlight set to to see what was dragged for instance if it's dragged to another window in another process or if you're dragging these records uh, to another list box on the same form or if you're dragging these three records to this list box itself um, one way or another you now have access to um, what what records are being dragged uh, and then on here you see on selection change the selection change uh, for uh, this event where it's where it changes it back to one record uh, that actually registers after the drop happens and so um, that's why I put that that alert there just to show you that that, that that's where that that is actually uh, you know, that selection change happens is not actually when you're dragging it's after the drag finishes and then you set your your dragging back to false because the drag is finished and you're all set to uh, drag some more rows um, an extension of this in v14 it's now possible to uh, set the drag icon so instead of the uh, plus sign that you're seeing here you can give information about what you're dragging, say, three records from the funk table. Uh, in fact, when you drag over other areas, for say, if, if you know, uh, another, another drop area, you can say uh, three records from the, drunk, uh, from the, from the funk table uh, dragging to drop area. So it's, you can graphic, graphically via an SVG picture um, update uh, information about what's being dragged as you're dragging it, which is very cool. But yeah, so this is how to drag multiple rows from a list box uh, in this particular version of 4D, which is V13. Um, and, uh, and right, yeah, so it's a little, little 4D hack. Uh, graphically, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. This is Brent Raymond from 4D Method User Group. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.